is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 220607.4 We intercepted a series of encoded messages grassing on us, so we've decided to restrict Orc's ability to send out messages by sedating him, putting him on the holodeck on a program that is identical to the armory. He will never know. Well, until after we've beaten the crap out of those two titans. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to talk about Elon Musk's Twitter buyout and the issues he is now facing and how this has been so prolonged to the point that, honestly, does anyone actually think he's buying it anymore? Or that the purchase will even go through? For those who don't know, I'll give you the Cliff's notes. Elon Musk owned or owns 9%, X%, let's go with that. Twitter, because he had been buying up all these shares, offered him a seat on the board of directors. Elon Musk declined, because Elon Musk wants the entire platform. Why? Because Elon Musk wants to open its potential but also protect free speech, which is a very valid thing to stand up for. And I'll insert why. Twitter has, over the years, openly admitted it is biased in one particular leaning. Politically, that is. Conceding that political conversations on Twitter are one-sided, bannings are predominantly the other side. Elon Musk thinks this is wrong. Many people think it's wrong. Political discourse or discourse of any variety should be open to all. This is where someone will now insert, oh yeah, but you're not free of consequence. There's no such thing as free of consequence. It doesn't exist. Stop trying to push it as a valid argument. It is not one. In the case of Twitter, they have TOS. That is their way of getting around governments trying to introduce further laws and restrictions for accountability on the platform. We all might not like TOS, but TOS does make sure that the platform is not held responsible for what we the user say. And I don't take any real issue with that. This free speech crusade that Elon Musk is on has made him so popular, it is also popular to not like him, for a number of reasons. Not least, for what he said, but also his academic background or lack thereof. The fact he's a billionaire, and who needs billions really? The fact he is trying to seize control of Twitter, with many believing him to be the enemy because he had offered Donald Trump his account back. Others just believing it's because he's a cuck, like Jack Murphy, or because of other people that he is associated with and or conspiracy theories he may well have or may not have pushed depending on your interpretation of the information at hand. So what do I think about Elon Musk? I truthfully don't actually mind him. I think he's very amusing on Twitter, he shitposts quite well, he manages to trigger people on a semi-regular basis by simply saying hello. He does it because he knows it annoys people, and I find that amusing. The man is successful, who cares really? He wants to buy Twitter, with what many hide behind to be buzzwords of hate speech. As a reason for not wanting Elon Musk to buy the platform, I want him to buy it more. Mostly because it annoys you. Because after all these years of watching the self-righteous declare that they are right because they're right, to then suddenly go scorched earth or to rage quit a platform because they don't get their own way for a change, I find it to be quite mm, 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 delicious. But as is well established over the years, I'm renowned for being a dick and I think of it as a form of karmic justice, to an extent. Much like when Trump won the US election in 2016. I thought it was highly amusing because I'm English. And don't forget, we got Boris, so <laughs> who's the real winner in all of that? I think Elon Musk buying Twitter is a good thing because it causes enough of a stir, because it generates enough interest, and also because I make a video series called This Week at Twitter and the salt is scrum diddly umptious but mostly the earlier points of the change, even though he hasn't even bought it, has caused. How Twitter has had to respond by even themselves going scorched earth on the very things that they have done. All he's had to do is make accusations, and Twitter has gone nuts. The users of it, but also those that run it, which I find interesting. I'm sure many people do, in fact. So how does this all now tie into why I've even brought this up as a video topic? You will undoubtedly have noticed the title, so that should now be a giveaway, and yes, I've prattled on for four and a half minutes. Elon Musk has threatened to walk away from the Twitter deal. Some had speculated the reason why is all a ruse, and the real reason is because Elon Musk cannot afford the $44 billion 
According to other sources though, in a letter filed with regulators, Elon Musk said he was entitled to do his own measurement of spam accounts. The letter itself formalizes a dispute that has simmered for weeks after Elon Musk declared the deal on hold pending further information. Twitter had alleged that spam and bot accounts made up a mere 5% of daily users on Twitter. Elon Musk believes that number represents a far greater share than the less than 5% that Twitter reported publicly. By the way, considering how many users there are on Twitter, 5% is still a lot. Lawyer Mike Ringler wrote a letter and stated as Twitter's prospective owner, Elon Musk is clearly entitled to the requested data to enable him to prepare for transitioning Twitter's business to his ownership and to facilitate his transaction financing. To do both, he must have a complete and accurate understanding of the very core of Twitter's business model, its active user base. Based on Twitter's behavior to date and the company's latest correspondence in particular, Elon Musk believes the company is actively resisting and thwarting his information rights. This is a clear material breach of Twitter's obligations under the merger agreement and Mr. Musk reserves all rights resulting therefrom, including his right to not consummate the transaction and his right to terminate the merger agreement. Couple things, thwarting makes it seem like somebody's a big bad villain, and consummate, I'm sure everyone thought the exact same thing when I read that word out loud. Yes, Elon Musk is sticking it in Jack Dorsey. In a statement put out by the company, they said that Twitter has and will continue to cooperatively share information with Musk to consummate the transaction in accordance with the terms of the merger agreement. Also indicating that they intended to complete the takeover at the agreed price and terms. Well, if you're going to do that, you might want to um, get on with it. As a small consequence, if Elon Musk tried to walk away, he faces a possible lawsuit, also a $1 billion breakup fee, which given the context and the circumstances, I'm sure doesn't mean too much at the moment. As Elon Musk has indicated, he still wants Twitter. He wants it, he wants it, he wants it. He asked Santa and he was a very good boy. Analysts have said that Elon Musk might be using this issue to try and renegotiate the price or potentially walk away. Elon Musk though has said that he believes the bots could account for potentially 20% or more of the Twitter users. With the filed letter confirming that both sides, Twitter and Musk, having gone back and forth on this issue since early May. It does also say that Elon Musk merits reasonable cooperation as he tries to line up financing for the deal. Twitter's latest offer to simply provide additional details regarding the company's own testing methodologies, whether through written materials or verbal explanations, is tantamount to refusing Elon Musk's data requests. Twitter's effort to characterize it otherwise is merely an attempt to obfuscate and confuse the issue. Many of you will have noticed that on Twitter, Texas has been featuring on Twitter related to this. And that is because Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton entered the debate, saying that he had launched an investigation into Twitter for potentially false reporting over its fake bot accounts. Twitter now has until the 27th of June to respond to his request for information. Many regulators have been scrutinizing Elon Musk's plan for the company, with Elon having lined up a number of investors to help pay for the takeover, and also using Tesla as a form of equity along with loans backed by his Tesla shares, which have been hit in recent weeks as market turmoil has risen billions off of the value of companies which include Tesla. By extension, this has made his $54.20 per share offer look more generous, especially when you consider that Twitter shares are trading below $39, which is down 3%. This argument over bot accounts can be resolved easily, and personally, if Twitter genuinely want to have this issue dealt with, they would have surely provided the information by now. But it sounds to me like their interpretation of the information is vastly different to what Elon Musk considers the information, perhaps one being reliant on probable information and the other factual. Let's call it absolute and relative. That seems fair, doesn't it? It's why when Musk said he was going to buy Twitter, he said he'd verify all actual human accounts. So I guess I won't get verified then. Although I would like a blue check mark, that'd be nice. C can I have at least a badge for long-term service without having been suspended or yeeted once? Can I have that? Anyway, as far as this buyout goes, I find it quite fascinating because of that. 
because it's clear and obvious they don't want the buyout. They say they do because the offer looks good. They're locked in for it, but they're arguing over something that can be resolved. And now it's gotten to a point where <laughs> state governments are getting involved, which is a tad cringy, but at the same time, false reporting... Yeah, no, that's not a good look for anyone, really, is it? No. How many bot accounts followed Biden again? 